Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session on our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. For today's session, we cover the names Al-Razak, Al-Wahhab, Al-Shakur. These names that concern the aspects of provision, of bestowing of gifts, as well as of appreciation and gratefulness. So inshallah, to begin with provision. One of our primary preoccupations as human beings, just living in the society, living in this world, is things such as paying rent, putting food on the table, paying our taxes, paying our education bills or our student loan bills, uh, paying for our medical expenses or our medical bills. These are things which are oftentimes at the forefront of our concern because these are things that uh, we worry about we'll, we'll, whether we'll uh, be able to continue on, uh, you know, and see the next day, you know, without having to worry about these things. And uh, oftentimes, as I mentioned, they, they these things bring us inherently to a state of worry that we worry about these things, and rightfully so, you know, not to not to minimize that by any means. That we live in a society, especially here in this country, where uh, you may become even more worrisome when you get sick because you're afraid you might go bankrupt if you go to seek treatment. And that just speaks to the negligence of the structural uh, disparities in the system. But again, that is a conversation for another time. But nevertheless, what, what we want to lift up here is that uh, the preoccupation with our provisions oftentimes leads us to be consumed by worry. And when we're consumed by worry to such a degree uh, uh, with respect to that we don't see um, any other way out, we start to engage in unhealthy behaviors. We start to go into different ways to try and make sure that we can provide that provision to, to attain that which we determine that we need. So we may engage in illegal activities. We may overwork ourselves at the expense of our relationships with our families, with our own bodies. We may put ourselves in jeopardy and uh, at our own detriment, try to do all these different things in, in the state of worry just to be able to see the next day just to be able to determine in what our minds is, we have adequate provision. Um, and in this state of worry, in this state of just pandemonium, where we're just running in circles and doing all these different things, uh, we oftentimes have then forgotten that Allah is not just Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Allah is also Ar-Razak. Allah is the one who at the end of the day provides and has written the provision out for each of us with respect to what we will have and what we won't have in our lives. And so risk is this concept of provision. And oftentimes we think of risk as just that which is material, which we can consume, it's, it's wealth, it's money, it's food, but actually risk is all kinds of benefits. It's both material as well as that which is uh, immaterial, that which is uh, spiritual or moral. It is the provision of the heart that's given when the heart uh, it is hurting and, and, and ached. It is the emotional strength given in times of difficulty. It is the sustenance of the soul provided in difficult moments. It is all of these things, plus that which we traditionally or conventionally associate. Uh, the essence of risk, though, whether it's material or non-material, concerns this these aspects of things that bring benefit to us, bring inherent benefit to us, and that are ultimately tied to Allah, that these are things given to us by Allah, but that benefit us. And so however much it benefits us, especially in the hereafter, depends on how we use that risk in this world. So think about how did we uh, utilize those provisions that were given to us? Because again, as we talked about in our last session, we are here on borrowed time. We are here in borrowed um, you know, bodies in a sense. These are gifts that have been given to us by Allah. How do we use these gifts? How do we use the provisions that have been provided? Are we heedless with them? Or are we mindful that these are from Allah and therefore they, we need to be proper stewards to them? So uh, Allah has named himself the provider, giving sustenance to everyone under the sun and anything under the sun that uh, not is just one time, but is continual and is for the human, the non-human, the Muslim, the non-Muslim, uh, the created world, the seen world, the unseen world, and so on and so forth. And so you have food for humans, you have rain for plants, you have sunshine that's given for all of creation, you have all these different things that are forms of provision. 
risk as well is something that shouldn't make us lazy. Let like we've been provided provision. All right, I'm just going to sit back, relax, and enjoy my provision, enjoy my risk, and not have to worry about it. But risk is something that inherently calls us to also strive. It may seem kind of an odd concept, but think of it like this uh, in the story of Hajar. Hajar, uh, the mother of Ismail, uh, the mother of uh, Ismail alayhi salam, um, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who when left in the desert by Ibrahim alayhi salam with her baby Ismail alayhi salam, uh, you know, had, had asked Ibrahim alayhi salam, is this something that Allah has commanded? And he responded in the affirmative. She said, then Allah will not abandon us and Allah will provide for us. Um, and you know, we, we know her famous story that she didn't just go and just kind of sit under, uh, you know, sit to the side and say, Allah is going to provide for us. So I'm not going to do anything. She uh, had her, it was her humanity in that moment. She knew to also run between the hills that she did um, what she had to do for survival. She was running between Safa and Marwa uh, in this aspect of striving, but still having that belief that Allah is going to provide. So uh, Allah did provide, but also you have this element of striving for that risk. So we also see uh, in this, in, in our world, unfortunately, the reality of things like poverty, wealth inequality, and income disparities uh, that oftentimes give us cause to doubt. Is Allah indeed how does Allah provide for certain people but not others? And so we want to make sure when we approach this, we don't think of Allah's attributes separately, that Allah is just ar razaq Allah is just the merciful, Allah is just, uh, you know, the most just, or is just all these things, um, you know, that these are things that are intertwined, that Allah is not just these things. Allah is all of these things simultaneously and how Allah operates in the world, how Allah operates in creation is beyond the confines of our intellectual limitations. But just to put it in a story um, that, that was shared that I came across that illustrates this beautifully, because oftentimes we'll see the reality of these disparities. And the first question and the first complaint that we'll have is like, Allah, how do you allow this to even happen? Um, but there's a story of a man who uh, you know walked upon uh, and this this group of children that are crying and they're screaming um, and you know because they're hungry or they're impoverished and so the man then uh, breaks down and starts to yell um, and 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 says like Allah why aren't you providing God why aren't you providing for uh, these people or uh, these children um, and what the man didn't realize was that those children were reflecting the divine cry crying out and complaining that this man is not helping them uh, or providing for them. And so when we look at these injustices, when we look at these disparities, when we look at all of these things that are lacks of provision in our society, we want to first and foremost ask ourselves, why does that exist and how do we contribute to that? Income inequality, food disparities, we, these are things that are human controlled in a sense. Why, why do these exist? When we see someone who's poor on the side of the street and we're in our AC car, uh, you know, and asking how can this person like be so poor? Where's Allah's justice? And, you know, we just drive away in a sense, but we don't reflect on that moment. What could we have done even more? Why is it so radical to tell that person, get in the car, I'm going to take you down um, you know, the street, we're going to get you cleaned up and get you some food and all that stuff. Why is that so crazy? But it's not crazy to just say, oh, Allah's not providing for that person. And, you know, how, 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 how bad of Allah to do so. So it, we, it gives us time to pause and to think. So next, uh, after provision, after provision, again, the, the baseline of provision is that uh, we become mindful of Allah. The next thing uh, that comes about uh, that is not something that is associated essentially with striving is the name of Al-Wahhab, the bestower of gifts. So think about the feeling that you get when someone gives you a gift, or if you are someone who gives people gifts, uh, the feeling that you have when you give a gift and someone receives it uh, in a very pleasant state. Uh, uh, Al-Wahhab is the one who constantly showers uh, the creation with gifts, but not just on special occasions. Al-Wahhab doesn't just wait till your wedding, doesn't just wait till your birthday or your anniversary or uh, you get a promotion. Al-Wahhab is one that gives gifts freely without any uh, asking of it. That there's this difference that we have with risk, which is provision, and hibah, which is gift. 
and that risk is something ordained for us. It's been listed out. It is something that we have all been given, but we also have to work and to strive for. Um, and hiba, is, on the other hand, is that which is simply a gift. It is. Uh, it has no relation to our striving or our effort. Um, it is something that we might not have ever thought to ask for or expect or even consider a gift. It might be somebody just helping us out with an errand one day. It may be a kind word from a stranger or a surprise or uh, any kind of thing that might be holistic in a sense. It doesn't have to just be material, but it can be of immaterial worth as well. Um, that it is this aspect of gifts that are tied to love that make it stand out. Gifts are those when we genuinely consider them gifts and we genuinely give them are given to those who we love, those who we care about, those who we have a concern for. Uh, and, and, and they're gifts that know our specific preferences and not just a generic one. Uh, and the gifts from Allah are as such. They are because Allah cares for us. Allah loves us. Allah uh, has a concern for us. And Allah wants to remind us that we are under Allah's care, even if we aren't maybe thinking of Allah at that time, or we aren't deserving of Allah. Um, and the Prophet relates a, uh, relates a tradition, a tradition related to the Prophet وسلم, that the heart is inclined to love those that do good to it. So there's this element uh, just psychologically and socially of being given gifts that uh, that draws the heart nearer. So when we not just see these gifts, you know, we, we may receive these gifts in so many different ways or shapes or form. It's not a traditional, you know, box with a bow on it. And this is a gift from Allah and you know exactly where it's from. It's in the, the all, you know, the mundane of life. It's in our uh, current operation of life where we may associate that gift to something else. But when we want to take a step back and we want to be more mindful when we're more cognizant and uh, mindful of Allah and conscious of Allah, we realize that everything that we've been given, everything that we are given, especially these things that make us happy, that make our hearts warm, are from Allah. So when we re realize that our hearts become attached to Allah, not attached to the gift or attached to the, the medium that has brought the gift, but attached to the one who has uh, originated that gift, the one who has facilitated it, uh, and the one who is Allah. And lastly, this takes us to our name of Ash-Shakur, the appreciative, the one who is giving. Uh, it's very interesting to see that Allah uh, is the one who has created everything, that has provided everything, yet Allah appreciates what we do. The few deeds that we might do uh, are rewarded with many blessings. The uh, good deeds that we do, no matter how small, are rewarded or the intentionality behind them is, is rewarded and the struggle behind them is what's rewarded. The effort that we put in is appreciated by Allah. And so it's really important to, for us to think about that if Allah is appreciative, Allah is free from any of the things that we do or free from any needs or wants, but that Allah is someone that is, or a, a God that is appreciative uh, of what we do, what we put in, gives us an idea again of this aspect of concern, of love for the creation. If Allah did not love us, if Allah did not have any care for us or have any attachment to us, what concern, what, what, what benefit would Allah have of being appreciative of the things that we do? And, and like I said, the, 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 the prayers that we do, the fasts that we do in this Ramadan, uh, all of these things that Allah necessarily doesn't have a need for, but Allah is appreciative that we do it because as servants of Allah, we want to try and strive for what Allah has created us for and what we uh, want to live into with respect to our purpose. And as we close out today, we want to think about how do we live with these names? How do we increase our provision? How do we increase our appreciation? How do we increase uh, the acknowledgement of gifts or the bestowing of gifts? And so all of these things are intertwined in a sense. At the root of them, there is this aspect of God consciousness. We need to be aware that Allah is the one who has provided all these things, whether it's things for our survival, whether it's just the things that warm our heart, um, and that Allah is the one who uh, not just is appreciative, but we should be appreciative as well, that all of the attributes that Allah has uh, has that we should try to reflect them in some way, shape, or form. When Allah bestows a provision on us, we too should help provide for the people around us. We too should be using that provision to help uh, the community around us. When Allah is al-Wahhab and giving us gifts, we should be giving gifts to others as well. When Allah is appreciative and ash-shakur, we should also uh, be ash-shakur, we should also be appreciative in this aspect, in, in the 
in, in this attribute in a sense and, and to be appreciative uh, in this aspect. And so um, we reflect those as much as we can, even though Allah is these eternal, we, we can still try to, uh, you know, utilize them and transform ourselves to, to be even better human beings. And so uh, when we take away these names, when we, when we incorporate these names, we want to be people who are grateful. We want to give thanks for that which is given, whether gifts or provisions. And more than anything, we want to see that uh, and realize that Allah is behind all of this, behind those things which we need for survival, behind those things which are given to us uh, as gifts, and behind those things which we uh, are appreciative of, if, even if we don't think to associate it with Allah. So we want to go away from the session uh, not belittling any good little good deed. Um, we want to strive for more. We want to uh, know that our intention and our efforts are what count. Uh, and we want to realize that uh, those things which increase the gifts of Allah, which increase uh, the provisions of Allah, uh, in, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, rely on this concept of mindfulness. So may Allah make us mindful creation, make us a mindful uh, species, make us mindful individuals that we see the provisions all around us, that we see the gifts all around us, and that we become appreciative, but that we also utilize these to help all that is around us and be uh, pleasing to Allah, inshallah. I mean, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.